at this. Going to the Reagan Library, look at this. Nice view. And we parked down there, down the hill. She wants a selfie here. It's the sign. Really. Ronald Reagan Presidential Library and Center for Public Affairs. And quarter mile walk. The sidewalks on the other side. Switch it here. Yeah, they got these signs all along the way of all the presidents. They even had Trump in there. And Biden. Yeah. There's the flowers. We could have probably parked down here where it says visitors parking. I guess. This is really nice setting. Yeah. Howard Taft, Woodrow Wilson. Oh, I doubt we could have found a parking spot in here. No backpacks. Large bags or large purses are allowed. You got to be kidding me. That's Ronald Reagan's picture. 81 to 89, 40th president. And this is something with a terracotta um, roof. Yeah. All these kids standing outside. There must be a, a tour. Jasmine's huh? history. No fear for that. We've done our best. Come and learn from it, okay? And here's a nice picture. Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. This is really special. Yeah, that's a little school. Um, group. They must have come in on one of those tour buses, don't you think? Nice fountain. I like this uh, atmosphere coming up here like this. Yeah. This is really nice. After the ride. Okay. You guys aren't members? Are you no. members? Yeah, no. Two no. tickets versus a membership is $50 versus $85. Versus $85 is good for one year and it works at all the presidential libraries. Just planning on going to the Nixon. Hi. The president. What did he say? Donald Reynolds. I don't get it. I thought uh, the National Archives did the libraries. Okay. It's a, it's a collaboration. Uh, co collaboration. <laughs> I gave two tours this morning. My brain is fried. Um, it's a collaboration between the George Lucas version and also the Strategic Defense Initiative, which got nicknamed Star Wars with Ronald Reagan. So okay. it's, like, it's kind of fact versus fiction. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> you know, you school kids. And what happened? Yeah. Sure. Not only the governor of the biggest state in the United States, but it became the most powerful man in the world. You just wander through here. Evolution of the Great Communicator. Yep. In high school, that's his high school picture. He went from high school on to college. But more importantly is that in between, he was a good guy. He was a good guy. He was a great communicator because of his unique ability to inspire the audience and trust. The Helen Hunting and School Plays in Dixon, Illinois, and the Eureka College. I tried out in the school play, and I tried out in the 
That was Dutch Reagan. A dapper Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Thinking on his feet, he off to Hollywood. After seeing himself on camera for the first time, Captain Reagan. Did you see that? Great Depression. Is he Reagan? Wyman, Jane Wyman. Was his first wife? This is a pretty busy thing. We've got several busloads of school kids. government programs once launched never disappear. Actually, a government tour is the nearest thing to eternal life we'll ever see on this earth. Nancy <laughs> Reagan. And standing beside a thin one without coming to the conclusion the fat man got that way by taking advantage of the thin one. So they're going to solve all the problems of human misery through government and government planning. Well, now, if government planning and welfare had the answer, and they've had almost 30 years of it, shouldn't we expect government to beat the sport once in a while? Shouldn't they be telling us about the decline each year in the number of people needing help, the reduction in the need for public housing? But the reverse is true. Each year, the need grows greater. The program grows greater. We were told four years ago, 17 million yep. people went to bed hungry each night. Well, that was probably true. We're all on a diet. But now we're told that 9.3 million families in this country are poverty-stricken on the basis of earning less than $3,000 a year. Welfare spending 10 times greater than it was in the dark depths of the... It was uh, Jimmy Carter, wasn't it? Was it? I think so. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah cuz when he was elected, yeah. they turned uh, um the hostage Iran turned That's turned right. the hostage loose and he he that gave the credit to Carter, yeah. Dallas Are you better off North. than you were four years ago? <laughs> Yep. Reagan, just say a few words at this 
Jared inflation, yeah. That's funny. We have just heard a call to arms and a call to us when it's really to different. really be successful in communicating and reveal to the American people the difference between this platform and the platform of the opposing party, which is nothing but a revamp and a reissue and a running of a late, late show of the thing that we've been hearing from them for the last 40 years. <laughs> Good evening. I'm here tonight to announce my intention to seek the Republican nomination for president. Mr. President Reagan kept a journal for every day that he was president, and he made sure everything was sent to me shortly after. Those are the countries. Oh wow. Okay. So when you're done in here, you're going to go through that door, and it'll activate video for you. And this is a picture of that inauguration. I want each one of you to go behind this podium. These are still used today, and they have the president's speech. Yep. That's when the uh, press secretary got shot in the head, do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, James Brady was the one that got shot. Second draft. Oh, <laughs> office here. As it is in the White House, exact dimensions. Um, <clears throat> four doors, just like in the White House. The door that you entered through that would lead to the rose garden and the colonnade. The door straight across would lead to a smaller office, an eating area, and um, a restroom. And so I like to tell the kids, this is the president's formal office. He's signing the bills, he um, has formal guests here, he has visitors, and President Reagan believed that you don't take your jacket and tie off in this historic formal office. So he could go back into that smaller office and relax a little bit more, uh, take his jacket off if he wanted to. If you were visiting the Oval Office and visiting the president, you'd go through security and you would come through the sort of hidden door here and you would exit the way you will exit. That would lead to his private secretary's office. So the offices that the president walks through are the big, beautiful kind of decorative arched um, doors. And the the rest of the block, they were a little bit pleasure. <laughs> a lot more pictures back there. Yeah. The rest of the desk, it is the desk that you see the photos of President Kennedy and John John Kennedy playing in the desk. That is that same desk. Uh, it was a gift from Queen Victoria to President Hayes. So we call it the Hayes desk or the Resolute desk. Um, and so two changes have been made to that desk over time. The first was there was no center panel there. Franklin, um, President Franklin Roosevelt added that center panel in. He was being televised, he had polio, and he had these um, pushes in a wheelchair, and it just gave a little more privacy. You couldn't see uh, whatever apparatus he was using to walk. Um, and so that was added. And the other change was made by President Reagan. Come on in. So President Reagan loved that chair. That's the chair that he used for his two terms. 
in office as governor. He wanted to use that chair and sit at that desk, but he was six foot one, and so he didn't fit under it very well. So he <laughs> asked the wonderful staff of the White House to add a little bit of wood at the bottom so you can see a line there. This is a replica, but it's yes. just like the real one, or that he's added about two inches of wood there at the bottom to raise it up just a little, so that he can fit his legs under the desk, and so use the chair that he wants to use. Come on in. I'm just gonna prattle on. <laughs> um, and so, like I said, that desk was a gift from Queen Victoria. When an, another head of state, the king, a queen of any country, gives the president, our president, a gift, it's a state gift. It belongs to us, the American people. The president does not get to keep those gifts. It's in our constitution that the president does not keep those gifts. The president can keep gifts that we sent him. President Reagan received over 100,000 gifts. Um, we have about 60,000 of them here in the archives. He can keep those, he just has to declare them on his taxes. So that's the difference between if a, another world leader gives him a gift and we give him a gift. He does not get to give keep those gifts that are given by other world leaders. Um, some more interesting things here about the Oval Office. It's just decorated like it was late in his second term. So President Reagan loved California. He wasn't from here, but he loved California. He loved the West. He loved this kind of uh, Western look. So we've got the brown carpeting, the brown curtains, a lot of the Western art. You'll see the Remington art, the big part of sheep, the saddle collection. He was a big horseman. So we've got the little saddles given by the Annenberg family. Uh, so he chose these kind of western colors, western motif, and each president has a warehouse of items that they can choose from to decorate their own Oval Office. So First lady. One evening, I noticed her name, my name, in a list of communist sympathizers in Hollywood. Nancy was desperate to clear her name, and she was told that Ronald Reagan, president of the Screen Actors Guild, might be able to help. If ever God gave me evidence that he had a plan for me, it was the night he brought Nancy into my life. I don't know if it was exactly love at first sight, but... Nobody likes to say, you know, her life began when she met Ronnie, and I think what she means by that is maybe she found the role she was destined to play. She became Ronald Reagan's anchor, and as he traveled around the country to build his career, he couldn't wait to get back to her and to the home she created for him. Yeah. Somebody else. Oh, Reagan's schedule. He had a full day. <laughs> That happened to stay ahead of the oh, monsters. A it is. That would be quite. Well, she was wearing that, right? Eh? <laughs> yes. To dinner. Well, this is a better yeah. outfit here. <laughs> Much better. Of her original gowns, I guess. Hmm. Before and the after. Huh. This was before in their house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
or just say no campaign. No, it continues down this aisle here, I believe. Air Force One Pavilion. Is this where he's buried? Air Force One Pavilion. Yeah, Turkey. Man. And he got a garden out there too. Not lean. Man, that's really something. Yeah. Got all the limos down here. Yeah. Suburban. Eighty three. Yeah, he went to all these countries. In Ireland. Did we go there, babe? That castle? Brezhnev. No, that's Gorbachev. They had the birthmark on his farm. Yeah. John Paul II. The Holocaust victims. China, the Great Wall. Korea. Time all around. Reykjavik? How about that? All right. Here we go, babe. They're chasing us. <laughs> I know. He's... He's pushing them along fast, isn't he? He is. Sure Have that many of them. Secret Service, starting with Abraham Lee. He had Secret Service with him, but he was assassinated. They had just started when he was assassinated. Oh, Kennedy? No, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, yeah, really? he started the Secret Service, oh, you're and kidding. yeah, he had a couple there, but they didn't. They oh, weren't I quite up that. to speed. Yeah. That evening, he was assassinated. Right, April fourteenth. He started the Secret Service and was assassinated the same night. How ironic is that? Wow. They did it to combat. Counter counterfeit. There's a helicopter down there. Did you read this song? Another movie theater.
Chief Boone. Pickens. So he was gone already. I guess. He must have already died. Big shine from one end to the other. Just a Boeing 707. Hey, we might be able to walk through it, babe. All right, welcome on board. Okay. Okay. Look at this plane. <laughs> All right. Seems like we've done this a couple times before. desk and this is his assistant's desk I guess whoops look at the jelly beans <laughs> do you like jelly beans yeah especially mm -hmm. So when there. President Reagan gave his speech in Berlin in 1987, uh, Colonel Shelander would be standing nearby holding the football. When President Reagan went to Moscow in 1989, Colonel Shelander would be or another one would be standing with the nuclear football not too far away. So kind of weird to think about. Uh, the photo, like I said, is of this airplane that we're standing in, in Berlin in 87, just after that famous speech. Uh, that photo shows how they tried to sleep, because there are no beds anywhere on this airplane. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I try to imagine flying to Berlin or to Moscow and making speeches, not having really slept in a bed or or taking a shower for <laughs> Ken Kachigian, who was the primary speechwriter, donated it uh, to the library when he retired. So that's a genuine. What was it donated? Uh, oh, oh, that thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah There's more jelly bellies. To IBM, oh, top of the line. <laughs> <laughs> So that's an uh, artifact. <laughs> I remember those. Just yeah, like yeah. I always wanted one, but those were expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they have IBM computer on Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.
That's pretty big. Carry a lot of staff. <laughs> Looks like it. Big plane. Back here in the back. Yeah. <laughs> and they have to stay back here unless they're hey. invited. That's good. Forward, That's really yeah. cool. I want a piece of that chocolate cake. I know. That looks Somebody's good. getting hungry. Everywhere we go, he's asking who's serving dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and President Reagan loves chocolate. Yeah. Yep, pretty impressive. The Suburban. <laughs> Start with Ike back then, eh? Uh -huh. There's a White Eisenhower in the 50s. They had an open limo. And they went to these the big... Secret Service followed Theodore Roosevelt's horse drunk. Carriage. Horse drawn carriage. <laughs> I like his license tag, yeah. Oh, that's cute. It's from each raised roof. That's the two vehicles when they land today. This police, LAPD. Barney so Five. Old, but I guess it was 40 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Kawasaki's. Instead of uh, BMWs. They just keep coming. All these school kids. There's a helicopter, babe. You want to go down and see it? Or just take a picture of it. Can you get in there? Yeah, it looks like you can walk up in there, can't it? You want to do that? Do we get. Where do we go in? I think it's on the other side. Oh, is it? That says exit only, babe. Okay. That's a wild engine. Marine one. Did you salute? Huh. <laughs> I even had the dunk, yeah. Yeah. So one stick there. Amazing. So it looks like. This is it. <laughs> yeah. He takes a little bit of staff and yeah. him and the first lady and there you go. A whirly bird of off. Watch your head. Yeah, it's empty. Nobody's there. Okay. I guess we go back upstairs now. <laughs> How would you like that? Out the exit up there. Now you can see. Yeah, look there. at that big plane now. Oh, man. Yeah, they're all going out. Yes, yeah, not organized well enough. It's a very nice building and everything, but I didn't see Mr. Gorbachev tear down this wall. 
when they dedicated Air Force One, all the people, Rupert Murdoch. So you can't get back in if you... says no re-entry once you leave. No tour continues this way. More and more groups. Oh, yeah. Nineteen... Oh, yeah. Berlin Wall. He was president when they exploded at yeah, the minute and a half. In, oh, I thought it was 87. It was 86. Yeah. 86. Oh, I didn't remember him, but he was president. The challenger. Reagan won every state except Minnesota. Except Minnesota, Mondale. Crazy Minnesotans. Yep. Doesn't say much in there. <laughs> I thought Bush appointed Rehnquist. Oh, he just appointed him Chief Justice. But Bush was the one that nominated him to the court. You know, we just left Bush well, yesterday. That can't be. No, that's Nixon. Oh, what am I saying? Nixon is yeah, one. Yeah, what am I saying? Nixon is the one that put him on the court. I'm all mixed up. <laughs> Sandra Day O'Connor. I know Lee Greenwood. On a Friday, just a few weeks ago, Reagan chose Scalia. Yeah. The metal shut its doors at noon, and optimism and pride. Because in the past three and a half years, things have been looking up in the country. Today, the economy is up. Taxes and inflation are down. Americans are working again. And so is America. So, while some folks might have come so they could tell their grandchildren they saw President Reagan, most of them just stopped by to say thanks. President Reagan, leadership that's working. Okay, Berlin Wall. They got a lot of the wall here, don't they? Man. This is pretty... Are you crawling there? The <laughs> <laughs> kid came out of the wall. That's okay. Crew chef. Pounding the desk. Yeah, I came out here for kids to go through, I guess. Oh, look at the bar door. Yeah. 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 
We got all this. Ah, Tola. Ortega, you remember him? Sandinista. Sounds like Sounds something like we heard, yeah. Yeah. No ammunition, no fuel. Planes that couldn't fly. <laughs> I can't believe that. 1980, fewer than three Navy ships were ready for duty. 88, nearly all of them are ready. Eight years later, 80%. And these are all protesters or distance that were um, imprisoned, I guess. He's, he was in prison for 11 years in Siberia, Siberia labor camps. Wow. 22 years in prison. He was, yeah. Like Waloessa, he became. Then he get out and do something. First president of Poland, democratically elected po of Poland. Yep. Pope John Paul II. But it doesn't rest in you. It rests in you, the American people, and in your trust. Yep. That was a scandal, Iran Contra. To deliver one of the most pivotal speeches in American history. Yeah. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Nothing in the West symbolized the differences between it and the Soviet Union more than the war. Its removal would be seen as a gesture symbolizing that the Soviet Union wanted to join the broader community of nations. Three months later, at a summit in Washington, they return to the bargaining table. Gorbachev is ready to compromise his position on SDI. He was a tough, hard bargainer. He was a Russian patriot who loved his country. But there was a chemistry that kept our conversations on a man-to-man -man basis without hate or hostility. On December 8, 1987, the two leaders overcome their differences and agree to destroy an entire class of nuclear weapons. It is in the name of eternal humanity that we have today performed our momentous deed. The following spring, I went to Moscow where President Gorbachev and I signed the formal ratification papers putting the INF agreement into force. They came to respect each other, probably even like each other. They were fairly different kinds of people. Nevertheless, they talked, they bargained, they achieved things. 
Once you begin a great movement, there's no telling where it'll end. in Washington and in Moscow. I think I'm going to get my camera straight here. So George Lucas was the one that started Star Wars. He was born in uh, somewhere close by here. Yeah. Okay. Darth Vader. Man. Nancy Guns. Well, they got a bust of me in here, babe. Look at that. I don't know what the connection is. Yeah, I don't know what the connection of Star Wars is to Ronald Reagan, but quick walkthrough anyway. Hmm. I guess Reagan's when it started the um, space defense thing. Eh? Huh? What kind of missing connection here? Well, I think he's, he's the one that started the Star Wars. Even though. Yeah, even though Trump started the space. That must be the connection. Yeah. yeah. These ballistic, ballistic missiles. Yeah, Dan was probably right in the middle of all this. That one, what happened? No. That was under Bush. I thought so. But younger Bush. That was 20 years after Reagan started. Oh. Oh, that? That's Normandy whenever the World War II invaded Normandy. of men. The air was filled with the crack of rifle fire and the roar of cannon. D-Day. At dawn on the morning of the 6th of June, 1944, 225 rangers jumped off the British landing craft and ran to the bottom of these cliffs. Their mission was one of the most difficult and daring of the invasion, to climb these sheer and desolate cliffs and take out the enemy guns who took the cliffs. These are the champions who helped free a continent. These are the heroes who helped end a war. Forty summers have passed since the battle that you fought here. You were young the day you took these cliffs. Some of you were hardly more than boys with the deepest joys of life before you. Yet you risked everything here. Why? Why did you do it? Well, what impelled you to put aside the instinct of self-preservation and risk your lives to take these cliffs? 
what inspired all the men of the armies that met here. We look at you and somehow we know the answer. It was faith and belief. It was loyalty and love. Here in this place, where the West held together, let us make a vow to our dead. Love riding horses. <laughs> yes. 600 yeah. He said it was his favorite place on earth. Oh. A little 1,500 square foot house. 688 acres, though. It's kind of like double Well, look at Catherine. Look at me. Ride the horsey. <laughs> Giddy up, horsey. Yeah. Alzheimer's in 94. That's a for 10 years afterwards. Huh? Funny, President George H. W. Bush gave him the Presidential Medal, Medal of Freedom. Norman Rockwell. The afflicted with Alzheimer's disease. About the citizens, we would keep this a private matter, or whether we would make this news known in a public way. At the moment, I feel just fine. I intend to live the remainder of the years God gives me on this earth, doing the things I have always done. I will continue to share life's journey with my beloved Nancy and my family. I plan to enjoy the great outdoors and stay in touch with my friends and supporters. In closing, let me thank you, the American people, for giving me the great honor of allowing me to serve as your president. When the Lord calls me home, whenever that may be, I will leave with the greatest love for this country of ours and eternal optimism for its future. I now begin the journey that will lead me into the sunset of my life. I know that for America, there will always be a bright dawn ahead. Thank you, my friends. May God always bless you. the passing of a president tonight. Ronald Reagan, surrounded by his family, died at his home in California today after a long and difficult battle with all of With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother, Ronald Barry. We must pray with confidence to God, the giver of life. He will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. Always remember that he was that person. All 
We have lost a great president, a great Here American, a great man. I have lost a dear friend. We are still being tried. But we have one friend to guide us, the long way we never had. We have his love. 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 From anyone I encountered in all my years of public life, I learned kindness. Well, I also learned courage. The nation did, and then I learned decency. The whole world did. God bless you, Ronald Wilson Reagan. The nation you love and led so well. I now begin the journey that will lead me into the sunset of my life. We know, as he always said, that America's best days are ahead of us. But with Ronald Reagan's passing, some very fine days are behind us. And now, that is worth our tears. I bring joy. Amen. Thank you, guys. It's great. When we are home. When we are home. Just take it. The nation mourns the passing of a president tonight. Ronald Reagan, now the wife and family, died and his only child was born. It's a song, like kind of a kooky. Yeah, he's, yeah, the son is kooky. Not, not the adoptive son. No, the, the real Ronald Jr. Let's pray with and confidence to God. She their child or her I think she was her child. Oh, they only had one son. They had the, of course, the adopted son, Michael. Michael. But they only had the one right here, Ron Jr. He's turned out to be quite different from his father. Under God, Mr. Gorbachev, Tear down this wall. Dedicated the clean freedom he has placed in the human heart. Waving their new passports, they rush forward screaming across the border. <laughs> Call on now to pass that dream freedom on to a wedding and a hopeful one. I just lost something back there. And he said, I hope you get well quick. They might have to make a speech in your pajamas. Reagan Bush. Well, I miss Reagan. I think we all miss him. So, if you want to just head on, yeah. there's the bar in between. I don't care if you want to go eat there, but I'm ready to go if you are. I can't wait to eat your turkey sandwiches. <laughs> Might have, you might be able to have a, a steak. A of, uh, it's cold out here. I think we came in this way. Got a piece of the Berlin Wall standing there when you first come in. Initial impression was a lot of empty, not space, not much continuity on the exhibits compared to other presidential. Libraries. We get out of here. I think we got out this way, babe. Yeah, I believe. I don't know. Yeah, for Ronald Reagan to be probably the most popular president in our time, um, this is really a nice facility, but something was not. It was not all inspiring like I expected. I think so. I think Nixon's Nixon's uh, presidential library yesterday was more touching yeah. to me. Yeah. And he was probably one of the most uh, villainous at the end of his presidency compared to Ronald Reagan. Yeah. It just was not a yeah, not a about the person. It's just the display of the museum. Yeah, it's a nice facility, well set out here in the hills. 
very nice uh, setting. Just something about it was just not um, inspiring. <laughs> yeah, it was just just what I said. It was kind of disconnected. And we've been in just about every presidential library now. The ones that we didn't expect much from were the ones that I thought were most impressive. Oh, well. Well, we're back to the bug. Just so happened that uh, we parked right next to Donald J. Trump. Make sure the red light's on. It is. Red light's on. You just watch the road. <laughs> Stuck in traffic in California, there. but I don't know if those are poppies, but they're definitely pretty wildflowers. Get over the cars. Pink and purple and yellow. Just all along the side of the road. Okay, it's Friday, April 26. We got here yesterday afternoon late, fighting all the wild California traffic in Ventura, California. This is Ventura RV Park. It's limited only to airstreams and teardrops. Kind of a unique setting, um, downtown Ventura. Uh, so now we're feeling like we're in with birds of a feather, you know? Not a real big park. The write-ups, I think, are a little exaggerated. It's not uh, quite as exciting as what they make it out to be. There's train tracks over there that we have heard trains coming through, mostly Amtrak, passenger trains. Uh, Kathy picked this site because tomorrow, Saturday, she's got our plan to take the ferry over to Channel Islands National Park. And uh, she's already booked us a kayak on a kayak tour um, been reading all the requirements so far as wet getting wet and uh, bringing extra clothes and there's, there's no we will be all day excursion so there's no food we got to pack lunch um, so she she was about to back out and I said no nah, let's just go for it so she's more concerned about me than she is for herself because I'm more susceptible to getting seasick for a number of reasons but uh so nah don't worry about it i'll battle through it i hope um so that's what we got planned for tomorrow and uh this uh rv park is pretty quiet well until the train comes through and considering we're right in the heart of ventura um not too bad so, uh, I don't know what we're going to do today. Today's Friday and we got a recovery day today. Get ready for our big uh, kayak and adventure and ferry ride over to Channel Islands tomorrow. So, we'll see what happens tomorrow.